two. And, and what? Yeah, I cut you off. Boom. Yeah, how, we, how we doing, Steve? It's been a while. Good to see you again. Steve fucking Cantwell. <laughs> uh, the guy <laughs> who got was to a video with like 12,000, 13,000 uh, views. Man, people love that episode with you. Um, I, I think I think it really hit a nerve. Thank you. Yeah, people do some seem to like that story. Mm. It's a fucking crazy story. Uh, it's a good story. In fairness, <laughs> like, uh, you know, there's a reason it did so good. So, mm. again, thank you, and thank you for coming back for episode two hundred. Anytime, and oh. happy happy St. Patrick's Day to you. According <laughs> to this on St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Or, uh, I'm sorry, April Fool's Day. Ah, yeah, I was, I was about to say. Uh, <laughs> there you go. You so know, I kind, I kind of expected that you would, you would say, "Oh, you're not hopping on today because it was April Fool's." Like you're that kind of guy. <laughs> I, I really did kind of expect it. Like, we, yeah, we, you, we had you two did. people answers today, and I expected it both to be April Fools. Yeah, you asked me if we were seriously on today, and I said, "Yep." Yeah, I should have just know. said uh, April Fools. Is that a big? Uh, is that a big holiday in Ireland? Probably not as big as I don't know how big it is. Like we don't sell merch over here. Like I don't know if you guys go to stores and there's like April Fool banners and stuff like that. It's like no, kind of like no. Yeah, does anywhere do that? I, I mean, I don't know. No. Is that anyway, it? mostly we. Uh, I'd say it's just an opportunity on Facebook for everybody to tell some cheesy, uh, you know. We, you know, post post some posting that they had won the lottery or some fucking thing, but it's just, uh, you know, it's just an opportunity for people to nod to the absurd. It's a bigger deal in elementary school, frankly, you know. Yeah, yeah. When you're yeah. just learning to lie, when you're an adult, every day is April Fool's Day to a certain extent. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> a, yeah, you probably seen our yoke today. Like we we seen someone say. They were getting on like some kind of big talk show in Ireland. And we we're like, okay, we gotta do something here. Uh we, we put up a thing like saying like we're two subscribers away from ten million or something. I saw that. Yeah. And then the if you actually click the link to our channel, our, our banner was like, gotcha, please subscribe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is an elaborate just joke at this point. Uh but yeah. You anything big for April Fools besides this? No, a bit of stand up, dinner with the family, that kind of thing. Mm. Always stand up, try to do something every night. Yeah, you're doing loads at the moment. How's that going? Good, good. Tonight, uh, every Thursday, I do um, uh, a ukulele, so, uh, ukulele music with my stand up, so kind of a cabaret type act. And so I'm going to do that tonight. I'm looking forward to that. It's, that's once a week. And then the rest of the time is just straight up stand up. But yeah, I look forward to my Thursday nights. And how can we be doing so much? You just doing it for fun or lots of opportunities? Stand-up comedy? Yeah. Just trying to get better. You just do it every day. Like, it, like, like you know, just consider it a workout, really. You're just, you're just trying to – it takes so long to be good at stand-up comedy. Decades, really. Mm. And you got to work at it every single day uh, that whole time. So that's, that's what I'm trying to do is just trying to improve writing constantly – uh, trying new stories on stage, recording it, seeing what works, listening to the recordings, re-editing the stories, tell the same story again. Sometimes go to two mics in a night and tell the same story and listen to the recording on the way over there and make a few changes. And just with stories, it's so hard because you think you know what's going to be funny, but you're always wrong. You know, a, a, the audience will laugh in an unexpected place or it'll be quiet for, for a long time. And with stand up, there's really the expectation that it's going to be laugh, 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 you know, pretty much in the uh, like waves on the beach where a storytelling, you can, the, they'll put up with a little uh, a little bit of a lull. You know, if you want to tell a sad part or just a thoughtful part. And to an extent, those two art forms are coming together in the big Venn diagram of stand up comedy and and uh, and storytelling. But um it's you, you got to really tweak a story to make it funny the whole way through to the extent that by the time you get done with it, it's not even true anymore. So the, the, sta the, the stand up comedy that I tell, none of those stories happened exactly the way I tell them versus podcast stories. Those are I try to be 99 percent truthful on those things. I'll change a few things 
change a name to protect the innocent. Maybe I'll amalgamate a couple of people in the story just to, to help it move along. But mm. uh, I think it's just two different kinds of art forms. Yeah. And what, what's the platform like at the moment? How, how's uh, what, What's it like if people want to show up and watch the shows? You, you were saying beforehand that there's not a mask to be seen. No, I mean, they, they re removed the mask restrictions here in, in Texas. And I was just at a show last night. None of the patrons were wearing masks. The bartenders and the people that work there are wearing masks, but all the patrons are just giving each other big hugs and passing around cigarettes and just doing all the things that everybody used to do. Because everybody has either had it or has been vaccinated. And so to a certain extent, this is like the lull. You guys mentioned you're going through like the third wave and of, uh, of uh, the third crescendo of, of different uh, strains of this virus. Yeah. That hasn't hit us yet. We're still in the in the eye of the storm where we think it's over. Are you still testing people out in Texas? Like, yep. is there still test centers and? Yep. Is, yeah, there's still drive up test centers. And how's the mm. the cases been since the the mask mandate was ended? You know. I stopped watching after I got it. Yeah. So I have no idea, really. I just kind of tuned the COVID part of the news out a little bit and tried just to get, you know, get on with the rest of my life. I, I just got it about a month ago. So How, How'd you fare out? I was, I was fine. I, I shook it right off. I could, I, the, only re, the only symptom that I had was a loss of taste and smell, and that's the only reason I knew I had it. Some minor aches and, and chills, but uh, I, I'd do that. I, the, getting tested was far worse than having it. It was far worse having somebody scrape my brain with a Q-tip. You know, I'd rather just, I'd have it twice to, to not have to get tested again. Yeah. <laughs> have you been uh, tested? Have either of you been inoculated? Yeah, I got tested. I was do, we're doing a, a Disney movie and I, I got uh, tested eight, eight times in a two week period. Wow. It nose hanging off me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh no, no I, th I thought it was okay because i think realistically with those productions they're not going as far as they're supposed to because they don't really want to catch a case and have to shut down a multi-million dollar production yeah which is kind of sketchy but you know yeah and it's a big target as far as lawsuits go too if somebody worked on a production and they got COVID while they were at work. That's a big old bullseye that, that that movie has on it that they have to settle that lawsuit before they can distribute, really. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's it, cool that you guys are making a movie. Uh, well, I mean, it's, 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 Ireland's a pretty place to film. So if, if people want to do it, then do it. Um, like, by all means. Uh, <laughs> and even like when, I don't know, when, when they're done filming, like the Irish tourism here, like it's, it leaves a lot of desire, but they normally do something with the area. Like, you know, when the most, or what was it? Force Awakens, that's Star Wars movie. Yeah. yeah. When they did that yeah. scene out with, with Luke, he was on some kind of islands. It's actual islands around here and they made it into a big tourist attraction. So. Yeah. Oh, what cool is the enough. name of that islander? I can't think of this. Killer Mike. Like, Killer Mike. Or, oh, Jesus. I'm going to look, look, look up there. Yeah, yeah. Pull up, Thomas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but well, you know my family. I, we met. I might have mentioned this last time I was on there, but my family is from from Ireland, and I have never been to Ireland. I would love to come over there and do a uh, do a stand up, uh, like a two or three Sorry. two or three shows. What's it called? It's called Skellig Michael. Skellig Michael it's down in Kerry, Skellig so Michael. down the very south of the island. And nice. yeah, you definitely come to Ireland, do some shows, man. There's loads of great places, dude. They eat up americans american oh, yeah. comedians get eaten up they're so easy to sell like they, like, they love there's, them. there's a guy from the office who's already sold out in like one of the office cast is doing a show here as a comedian now and he's already sold out like two theaters in ireland crazy yeah not bad it's well mad. well if there's a promoter listening hit me up <laughs> hit him up well if we get the same kind of numbers as last time steve we might just <laughs> uh Dude, that was one hell of a show. I'm still in awe at it. It's just, oh my. Like, it's, it's one of those things that you can't get out of your head. Like, it, it's like I'll just be there chilling out one day, and next thing I'll just think, like, I cannot believe that fucking story, man. It, like, it's crazy. <laughs> like, the, um, the shit you have to go through, man. And yeah. it, it just gets fucking crazier. And if, if there's anything that would make you think even more during a simulation, 
it's a whole situation at the moment. It's yes. Crazy. Yes, absolutely. And it seems like a dystopian future compared to like, you look at the world before I did that Salvia trip and you look at the world since I came back, it's a chaotic version of the, of the little Mormon snow. You know, my, my life before I went into that guy's gun room, it was a perfect Mormon snow globe of a life, you know, just, uh, uh, you know, sterilized for my protection. And then I go to, to the, have the Salvia trip. And when I come back, everything about the last, God, what's it been? 12 years, everything about the last 12 years has been just a chaotic, the world has gone to fucking gone. And in, in fairness, the last, the last 12 years have been pretty weird. They've yeah. been very weird. And things were not like this before I did Salvia. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe it's, and, but, you know, but I, I, I started, I, I came, when I, when I did Salvia, I lost my magical worldview to a certain extent. So I no longer believe that there is, uh, well, there might be a God, but it's certainly not a Mormon God. But I, I kind of lost my belief system that everything had safety rails on it, that everything was nerfed for my protection, and that there was a loving God in heaven watching over me and would never let things get too crazy. It would always push it to the edge to where it was being tested, but it would never let it go over the edge. And now it just seems like it is just days from going over the edge in about 30 different directions i mean we just lived through donald trump as a president uh it seemed like the whole country was going to tear itself the fuck apart at the during that election cops over here are shooting black people all the time and the black people have fucking had it with that and so have, so have most of the white people and just the, the world just wants to tear itself apart it, it seems to me at any given time in america in the past 12 years that civil unrest wants to dr jump off and that and that you could strike spark in any direction as far as as, as trying to uh to ignite whatever fuse is on this thing i mean we have we have more guns in this country than we do have people and <laughs> if things go fucking crazy here people don't starve to death quietly i mean they, they, there's 10 million people in the united states who are on the verge of being evicted except for a CDC moratorium on eviction. As soon as that ends, there's going to be suddenly 10 million more homeless people in America than there were the day before. And when that happens, it's going to be like a Mad Max movie. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, but wasn't that's... Mad Max set around like this time period too? Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. Interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> As lazy writing in the uh, simulation, You're just bringing us back to uh, <laughs> everything turns into a movie. They're just reusing stuff now. Come on, think now, of something original, will you? Fucking idiot. How, yeah. how, how convinced are you on this whole simulation theory thing? <laughs> no, I mean, for most of my life, I abused the word no. You know, I would stand up in church and I would tell people, I know the Mormon church is true. So I don't think I have the right to use that any anymore because I've proved myself as gullible. But uh, there's zero chance that I have it figured out. But uh, there's a but I I'm pretty sure there's something going on. It, it, a simulation is just my best guess at it. And really, in some ways, for me, like uh, religion for atheists you know your simulation theory is just trying to make sense of what happens when you die and just tries to come to grips with the fact that you're temporary and that's what that's what religion is for most people it's a, it's a way to come mm -hmm. to grips with your own mortality and to make sense of it all well you know simulation theory is just exactly that but for people who can't make themselves believe in god anymore but for a certain reason i think for our for our our survival uh, we are hardwired to try to duck away and shy away from the truth of, of, of ourselves being temporary. That just got deep. Deep, man. But yeah, <laughs> that was not as deep answer than I expected. But yeah, but, uh, I, no, you're right. 100%. And the thing is, man, is that nobody's got this shit figured out. Nobody. Nobody. Because everybody who knows what happened, they can't tell you what, what's going to happen, sadly. You know? Yeah. yeah. Even those people who die and then come back. You know, they, they got nothing to say. Nothing to say. And they can't prove it anyway. You know, yeah. and it's too big of a thing to take on somebody's word because people are too full of shit. So 
you know, you can't just start just choose a religion blindly on somebody somebody's crazy story and then and then spend your life doing it. You, you know, it just doesn't make any sense. It's just yeah. It's unknowable from our perspective, and that's a hard thing. From that was the hardest thing for me to wrap my my arms around, is because I really looked forward to the day when Jesus was going to pull me up on his lap and explain it all to me. And coming to grips with the fact that that's not going to happen has been maybe that's been probably harder for me to uh, get my head around than the idea of being temporary. Is the fact that there's never going to be a reveal. There's never going to be a, po- a moment in my life when I understand what was happening. I was born in ignorance and I'm going to die in ignorance and I'm just going to believe some bullshit in error along the way. Jesus Christ. Because <laughs> no one can know. It's no, you're right. Knowing. You're right. Yeah. It's just that simple. But it's, sorry, it's so sorry, hard sorry to if you're a religious well. person listening right now. But like, uh, it is hard <laughs> to soak up that as well, that you, you have to come to to grips with that reality that mm. you're just i love thinking about this shit man i'm so glad you brought this up because i scare people yeah. the way i think yeah <laughs> and that's why you're not going to talk about it no no no, no. But you're you're, you're, <laughs> yeah. you're right though it's that people don't understand that they just don't know and and you could have as much belief as you want but at the end of the day if, you, if you're wrong you and, and and hypothetically if this is it and when you die it's just black like, I don't want to die in my sleep, man. I want to make sure I'm dead. Because I will hate if I go to sleep one night and I and I just never wake up. and never well, no, you don't. Have... You don't have time to hate. Yeah. Huh? I said you won't have time to hate. That's what I mean, man. You won't. <laughs> you won't know. Exactly. You, you could go you to sleep tonight, buddy. And that no, could be it. I, I, I could put on the solo show after this. Don't want that. Oh, fuck you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want that to happen, though. I, I like... Mm. I don't, I don't want to die either, but it, and it, but it's hard to get your head around the fact that you're temporary and you're ignorant, and neither of those two things is likely to change. They'll fix the temporary part a lot sooner than they fix the ignorant part, because they're on the verge. There's lots of animals in this world that are genetically immortal. Yeah. You, like, uh, you know, um, fucking stingrays will live forever until something kills them, because they their genes make perfect copies of themselves. And there's no reason that ours can't make perfect copies of themselves, but we lack a certain protein and our telomeres on the end of our DNA strands get shorter and shorter every time they copy. And that's why we age. They're on the verge of fixing that. Right. And they'll fix that. And we'll be able to live for thousands of years, but we'll still have no idea if there's a God. I think this guy's called, I think it's David Sinclair. Are you familiar with him? I've heard that name. He Would is he a drummer for The Cure. I don't know if he's a drummer. I know he's a scientist. Uh, okay. he's, he's huge in the anti-aging field. So he's, he's 52 and he looks like he could be, like, I guess, like early 30s. He is he's he's really onto player. something. And he has like a couple of things, um, like chemicals he takes or whatever uh, to help him Yeah. Uh, look younger and stay younger. I'll pull up a picture of the guy. You can share your screen there. Don't you? Yeah. Gives a second there, lads. Got to close all those dodgy, dodgy things on my screen. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm I'm 52. He's 52 as well. You're 50, man. You don't look 52 enough. Oh, right. I was, this guy I was born like, in 1969. Jesus, that guy's wearing a wig. Why, why, why is there a picture of Paul Rudd there? <laughs> 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 why, why is Paul Rudd there? <laughs> That's so dumb. <laughs> What's this? Oh, David Sinclair said happy birthday to Paul Rudd. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, yeah, he, he's he's big into the anti-aging field. He's he's done stuff at Google as well. He's. I, yeah. I hope he knows what he's talking about. I'm going to listen to every, every bit of media there is on him. Hopefully he comes out with a nugget of knowledge. I think that's attainable. I think it's attainable to um, upload our consciousness into a machine. It's attainable to have those machines go crazy and try to kill us all. Yeah, exactly. Dude. There's going to be a time when you can slip on that Oculus Rift and, and fuck each other in cyberspace. You wear some kind of a bodysuit. <laughs> as soon as they make it so that you can suck Dude. each other's dick. On don't, 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 don't even start because you, we'll can already, you can already do that. Really? That's already a thing. Um, well, then we're, then this, the clock has begun on our extinction because people Dude. won't fuck with each other in person. If they it's not, it's not a problem in Japan. And fuck Britney Spears. The fuck yeah. do you mean that's a problem in Japan? Do they actually do that? Yeah, like a lot of men are like way too scared of women now. So they resort yeah. to like these sex robots or whatever. Yeah. 
They sell they sell girls panties in used panties in vending machines, and people will buy them on the on the subway, and take them home and just smell the panties and jerk off and never actually go out and meet an actual woman, and have a family and get their leg in that trap, and they'll just they'll go extinct, you know because it's just one day, if you get too good at relieving those those biological urges, who would want to go out there and in fairness you know, yeah. The, yeah, do the dishes for some girl every night. Do a good deed with a bad leg. Shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh but ever since I put on one of those things, I was more convinced on the simulation idea because this yeah. is a shitty one. This is like yeah. when I bought this, it was like the cheapest on the market. Um, and yeah. it was like a hundred bucks less than the one before it. And it's like entry level. And I've seen some of the ones that are that are better and some of the ones that are coming out soon. Like there's some that have like refresh rates faster than the human eye. So you can't tell a difference. Um, and yeah. besides the fact you're wearing something heavy, the audio and how can good just is that keep getting be better. In 10 years, in 10 years, how good is that going to be? That's just yeah. 10 years. There's also these haptic feedback suits. So if yeah. someone, if you get shot in the game or whatever, you're going to feel it. There's all these kind of technologies, full body tracking. Like if, if I want to use that thing, I don't even need the controllers. I can use my own hands. Yeah. Like it, it is that crazy. <laughs> and they, and once they make a neural implant that you can take <laughs> where you can where you can forget that you're playing a game or or that time dilation that you experience in a salvia trip where in an afternoon you can live an entire 20 year epic war you know against the machines or whatever where you forget that you're playing a machine that you're playing the game until you die uh, as soon as that's indistinguishable from human life that's this if we get to that point immortality will mean nothing because if you can live like i guess like a year's like war campaign when a couple in, in an afternoon yeah like you'd have some ads you know they'd go to like i don't know if you, if you could do stuff like that there'd be, there'd be a lot of learning entire languages in there in like oh yeah right before a test you know stuff like that Yes, I mean, I I lived eight years in forty five seconds. I learned to play the guitar and and sing in front of people, and forty five seconds later, I came, I got up off the floor, and I can still play the ukulele and sing in front of people. So what you're saying? So is, that was that's absolutely possible. It, yeah. What you're saying is VR need to invest in the Southie market. I reckon they really want that, this shit to work, dude. How fucking freaky would that be? Interesting. It's merged. Interesting. Well, your brain will do it. It will, your brain will do it naturally when you dream. Time dilation. Yeah, well, that's mm. very true, actually. Because yeah. Also, I have dreams as well that in the dream I'll hear a bell or something and it'll turn into my alarm in real life. I always hate when that shit happens because <laughs> that shit freaks me out. Like I'll hear like this clock tower ringing, it's like ding ding, and next thing I know, I'm in my bed and it's like ding ding ding. ding. I'm like the fuck. <laughs> yeah do you ever do you ever dream that you're taking a piss and then you, you and then you wake up and you you weren't standing at the toilet you were For just future in your bed. job applications no, <laughs> no. <laughs> but between a good friend like me and you steve no <laughs> yeah, absolute no well you ever had that dream yeah, about five minutes ago <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> That, that's so dumb. Yeah, I don't really dream, really. I had a I had a Mormon priest put his hands on my head when my dad died. I used to have terrible nightmares about about him. And uh, this Mormon priest asked me if he wanted me to give him, wanted him to give me a blessing that would bless it bless me so that I would not have dreams anymore. And I, like an idiot, said yes. And he, when I was twenty two, put his hands on my head and told me that I wouldn't have dreams anymore. And now, to this day, I still don't have dreams anymore, and I've been to hit. I don't believe in God anymore. It's got to be some kind of a post-hypnotic suggestion that's so powerful because I was brainwashed. But I can't. I've I've gone to hypnotists to try to reverse it, and I can't. I can't make the dreaming come back. I must dream, but I just must forget that I that I dream. Mm. But I feel like I've I've lost something. That's pretty weird. That I, we we've had a hypnotist on before, Doctor Dave Hill had them on a couple times now and uh yeah they, 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 they can do a lot of shit it is like the power of suggestion yep it's crazy what hypnotist can do like he he was able to get a guy to like 
like pretend he was shagging a chair in front of an entire audience. Yeah. Uh, you know, stuff like that. Like Comedian imagine. hypnotists. Those shows are amazing. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Just insane. And you can't follow somebody that does that does a set like that. Mm. You know, get somebody that gets the whole audience into it and the guy's pretending he's Elvis Presley and everybody's laughing at each other. And then he gets off stage and you're like, all right, ladies and gentlemen, now Steve Cantwell. And you stand up there and tell stories and everybody goes to the restroom, you know? <laughs> nah. <It's> impossible. <laughs> impossible to follow. It's like following a three-ring circus. But no, yeah, that's I'm simple then. I'm sure everybody shows learn, up. You know, what, you what learn Steve Cantwell. close-up magic. You learn hypnotism. Done. That's an easy three-day job, man. Be nothing for you. <laughs> I just need another salvia trip. Get good at close magic. Have, have you ever considered doing it again? Or are you like no. fucked up? <laughs> it just it lasts too fucking long, and you miss everybody too hard. It wouldn't be quite as bad this time because you'd be able to console yourself with saying, "Okay, I know that this is a salvia trip, and I haven't gone crazy, and I and it really will come back, and it will be as if no time has passed." But to you, it still seems like eight years since you saw your kids. And that's just too fucking. I've still, I've still never done LSD. So maybe in the end, maybe when I'm terminal, if somebody, if a, if I ever find a lump in my armpit and my doctor says you got six months, buddy, I might go get a big old baseball sized hunk of that salvia, and just live a human, you know, the equivalent of an entire human lifetime, every day, you know. Yeah, that's. What well, was what's that movie? And uh, it's a big one. Is it Inception? Yeah. Inception, and like the time was passing like extremely slowly, and they went really deep into like the, the dream thing or whatever, and they did live like an entire lifetime, had kids and everything, and then got pulled out of it. Dude, <laughs> that is fucking freaky. There's some Rick and Morty shit to deal with that stuff too. Absolutely, <laughs> fuck yeah. it. that show's great, man. I was show. even thinking, even during your your first episode we did with you, the first thing that came to my mind. Remember Roy? Like that episode. Yeah, the carpet store. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you beat cancer, went back to the carpet store. <laughs> Have you not seen that episode? Oh, this guy's, taking, this guy's <laughs> taking Morty off the grid. <laughs> this guy doesn't have a social security deck. <laughs> okay, that, that fucking, I couldn't help draw similarities from that episode to your story, but uh, I think one of the best comments I ever saw that was on your video was... Uh, this guy lived in an open RPG for eight years. <laughs> <laughs> and then but they, they said, you lived in an open RPG, RPG for eight years and did nothing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Did nothing. Do you mind if I pull up some of the comments? No, go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, do you, did you what? do anything crazy? Maybe that you thought you could get away with? Or was it all, you were, you were thinking, I, this is real shit, you know? I thought for the last half of it that it was real shit. And then the, the first little while that I was there, um, I pro- I did a lot of things and said things to people mostly that you wouldn't say if you thought that it was real, you know? Yeah. And, and it really put people off. But it's, it's an uncomfortable feeling when everybody looks at you that way. So you quit doing that shit pretty quickly, you yeah. know? So you didn't and then, and then story. eventually, I believe that brain damage. So I just, I tried to to behave normally, was yeah. was a big part of the day. What would a normal person do, you know? No, yeah. Um, shit, man. <laughs> it, it it it's so fucking. It's such a unique thing, because yeah, you you'd never I mean, the, think of it, you know. That's mad. The first couple of years, I would break out crying at the least. I was just on the thin edge of of, uh, of it emotionally. And if anybody started to talk to me or ask me questions about, hey, tell us how you got a family up in Alaska or how you used to be Mormon. If I got talking about it at work, I would start to cry and have to and have to stop talking about it because it just uh, it was just it was too raw. But then eventually, over the course of eight years, uh I would I would talk to people and just make them laugh about the fact that I thought that I used to be Mormon and had a family that lived in Alaska was up there on witness protection and everybody would just laugh because everybody that was laughing had known me my entire life in Tyler. Mm. So this is on YouTube. Why does it say studio? No, this is. Uh, uh, this is like so we can see it. This is what this is our view uh, when we're going over analytics or whatever. So this dude got a chance to spend eight years in open world RPG and he didn't do anything cool with it. <laughs> uh, hey, just doing it is cool. Fuck yeah, you kidding? 
Yeah, let's, 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 let's prove it's real first, and then we'll go base jumping. Crazy, man. Apparently, the electronic watermelon band is real. It is? Apparently, apparently yeah. Apparently. I, I remember reading that thing. And, what you, else did people were, say was real? You were in a band, weren't you? Like I was in a band. I, I, that would be an interesting Google that I've never Googled if there is an electric watermelon. My production company is called Electric Watermelon. I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. Someday. <laughs> have, have you applied? He has like a. You can, you can apply to be on his show. Like, you should definitely you can? look into that. Oh yeah. yeah, he has a application website for it. So you. Yeah, we know a couple guys who have gone first. Mm. Hmm. You should definitely look into that. And if you want help, sure, we're here. Give you a hand. Okay. Yeah. Um, Just make so sure that... to give us a big shout out. Like you know. Oh like for sure. How you know? are you, Joe Rogan? Do you know about these lads? Yeah. Um, so, so people are saying um, it sounds like something in, in Star Trek. Uh, he, apparently, I guess Cap, Captain Picard or whatever he is, he did something similar. Oh, really? Did yeah. Salvia and went to well, a little farm town? The, the idea of like you live an entire life in a couple of seconds has probably been around for a while. As long as there's been yes. psychedelic experiences. Uh, or any feeling of time dilation there's going to well, be something like that people have probably been smoking because salvia is just sage people have probably been smoking sage for hundreds of thousands of years and that's probably where that where that story uh i call that a MacGuffin, but that's, that's probably where that story MacGuffin comes from is is from the fact that people have taken psilocybin mushrooms or salvia or something like that and experienced living a lifetime in a in a very short time what just before you read that comment there Jed, one of my favorite things ever and it's one of the comments on this video it, it, it it's it's he should have ta- he should have bought salvia when he was on salvia and go deeper like <laughs> i considered that did you actually? i considered that i i can i know i didn't do it of course but i certainly considered it huh. mm. that would have been unique yeah so <laughs> This this guy's fury here, uh, Mur Mur and Mike eighty two, fair page in. Yeah. Uh, so his idea is your consciousness shot over to a parallel timeline, where Texas Steve was just an empty vessel, um, or he was dead or whatever in a water skiing accident, and you just jumped into his body basically. And then he lived on the eight years you were there, and um, yeah, he dropped dead with a bucket of KFC in his hand. Uh, Second, you came back. That's just freaky. The idea, like you basically possessed somebody. I mean, that could be true. I mean, you, there's, there's, there's no, there's none of it that couldn't be true. You know, anything's possible. Anything's possible. Dude, there's a lot of comments on this, but basically, a lot of our, our like different theories are a lot of people don't solve it or blah blah blah. Dude, it's it's it's, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you read it yourself, dude. Or you heard it? It's it's crazy. And it is crazy, and it, it should not. People should not do it lightly, you know. <laughs> yeah, mushrooms yeah. is pretty. It, mushrooms is probably the most benign of all uh, of all psychedelics. I would I would recommend mushrooms over over uh, all of them. But uh, you should all. You really need to prepare yourself if you're going to do. Well, I, I, I told, probably told you about this last time, but I read a comment about, that a guy wrote about how he was stuck being a coat of paint on a barn for 30 years. Like, he just couldn't, couldn't move, was cold, was hot, was bored, almost lost his mind. But we, I don't we've heard stuck doing loads that. of other stories since, like on Reddit as well. A, a guy Reddit. was a wrench in a toolbox. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's, 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 like, imagine, like, how little you use a wrench as well so like that that's as bad as the paint and the subtle jealousies that exist between he and the other wrenches yeah the, the hammer got the, picked yeah yeah <laughs> dude oh, that's torture man that, that they should make prisoners smoke that shit instead of sending them to death row yeah Who knows? they could come up better people exactly. but um, you, know? you, you were also in that witness protection thing. Uh, we did, we yes. didn't talk about that last time. No, not really. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when I was in my 20s, 
I had a, a pretty successful janitorial company in Orlando and sold half of that company to a guy who approached me on the street one day and got to know him over the course of six months. And in those six months, he confessed to me all the gory details of how he killed his mother-in-law. And so I hired a private investigator first to see if he was pulling my leg. But when it turned out that he wasn't pulling my leg, uh, a bunch of cops from Cincinnati came to visit me, wanted to know why I knew all these details about uh, this murder in Ohio. So they, long story short, they arrested my partner and uh, didn't want me to get intimidated and to change. There was no physical evidence that he'd done it. It was just the fact that he had told me all these details. So they didn't want me to get one of his friends to threaten me or, or something and for me to get intimidated. So they said, well, we're going to just, we're going to send you someplace to while this, while the trial happens should only be about 18 months. And turned out to be two years. I think they told me six months was the first number they gave me. But then two years later, I was, I was, that is when I finally got out of witness protection. And then once I got out of witness protection, my life in Orlando had essentially crashed into the side of a mountain because I had ghosted in the middle of the night. And um, so there was no reason to come back. So I just stayed in Alaska, built a little house, a big house, I guess, and uh, raised my family. And uh, didn't you say last time that Netflix were making some sort of documentary or something about that? Yeah, and they, they, we negotiated with those guys back and forth, and uh, that didn't actually end up happening. So they wanted to own the story in perpetuity. It was this group, I, I probably don't want to say their name, but it was, a, it was a, a production company that was putting together this documentary. And they wanted to own the stories in perpetuity and have the right to change it, however they uh, see fit. Okay. And that was the big stick. Both of those are the big sticking point for me because I don't want to have to get somebody's permission every time I want to do a podcast. And I certainly don't want to spend the rest of my life being contradicted by a documentary that was made about me. And they were really only offering um, like pickup truck, like enough money to buy a new pickup truck. It really wasn't a life changing amount of money. Hmm. So uh after getting some advice from a few good comedian friends of mine um, that had been through this kind of thing before, we passed on the deal. So, I did. I did. I did make something for somebody that's being animated right now, and uh, there'll be an announcement on that sometime this year. But uh, so that whole Salvia thing is being animated by some uh, some people, and so that's that will come out. So there will be some content on there that you can see about me. But so far. Uh, I think the, the the documentary about my life is is not. If anybody does it, I think I want to do it, so I can control. So, I, did I tell you guys about my van? No. I think so. Okay. No. So I, I bought a big crafter van and and remodeled the inside of it to be a podcast studio. So I am going to take comics camping in this van and tell them a section of my life story, essentially. And I want to do a series of these. And then and then release those as uh, a life story, because then at least um, the true version of it is out there. The, the story is the way I want it to be. It's edited the way I want it to be. Nobody else is trying to make money on it, you know, and that will just sort of settle all of that. And then if somebody wants to buy it and put it up on their on their streaming service, that's fine, too. Or I can but I plan on just putting it up on on YouTube, you know. Well, I'd say apply beforehand and see if you can make it like a. YouTube original or something. That'd be cool. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Huh? Um, and like, what, what kind of people are you looking to get involved? Like, what, 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 what comics what, are you thinking? A lot of those guys that what that were on the crab feast. I'm going to reach out to them uh, and and see if I can get them to do it. You know, I'm going to ask Steve Simone and and uh, and um, um, Josh Adam Myers and Jay Larson, of course, and and Ryan Sickler and just anybody that I can get. You know, the, the, uh, to, to do it, really. Because as people, if, if, if you can get somebody that's good and, and has a good following on, on YouTube, then it, it helps boost that, that, that following for you. So, yeah. I don't well, know, we'll see. From, from our experience, that is meh. Yeah. Like that, 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 can, that, that can work or that can fail miserably. Yeah. Yeah. Like we've we got people on with millions of subscribers and gets 40 views. 
but we have other people with hundred yeah. thousand subscribers and you know they've ch- pretty much changed their fucking lives with the amount of support we received you know it's it's yeah it's weird how that works you know mm. yeah yeah it really depends mm. um mm. and mm. sometimes we just kind of hit it out of the ballpark with an episode people just eat up like your one <laughs> yeah uh, I, I did not expect that to be as good as it was when, oh, no. we, when we finished and it was just me and thomas were kind of like <laughs> what just happened <laughs> <laughs> and then, then we seen it got a hundred views in like its first day, yeah. And then it started going up, and up, and up. We shared a little bit more, and it was going up so much more in such a tiny amount of time. It just kind of blew up. Yeah, it just kind of became, you know, small v viral. You know, just a, just a little bit of a of a a taste of what can happen and people sometimes post things and they get millions of views can you imagine what that would be like that would be insane yeah i've seen it i have never yeah. seen this guy he like he had one thousand uh i had one thousand subscribers but he had one one video on it it was with you know jordan belfort that that guy from uh wolf wall street the real guy oh yes 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 he had a he did a podcast with him he's like maybe four podcasts one was with him and the rest were like 30. 120 you know that kind of numbers and then this one million because the guy was saying like would he take a a loot again is that what they're called yeah and then then he said uh absolutely like his his reaction was amazing (laughs) and uh yeah that that was the viral clip for him shit yeah anything (laughs) the whole world yeah you see yeah anything can go viral oh yeah Mm. it's really weird how the internet works man i mean people try their whole lives to get you know slither of to be viral and then there's people who literally post a picture of bread on tiktok and 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 it gets 12 million likes it it, it makes no sense how it works it's like (laughs) or what was that thing on instagram like there was an egg oh yeah and i wanted the egg to get the most amount of likes of any picture ever and And it was for no reason initially (laughs) did they succeed Oh, they, they did. did, yeah. They beat Kylie huh. Jenner, which was the most... I think it's on... How did they they, beat they her? With an egg. It's quite simple. <laughs> people kept sharing it. People kept <laughs> begging people to like the picture of the egg. Yeah. It was a Super Bowl ad. Uh, I mean... well, at, the, at the end, like it was, it was cracking or whatever, and it was like a mental health thing, right? Uh, yeah. No, no, no. It was a thing for a documentary on how they made the egg. Really? They cracked it hmm. on it was a Super Bowl... It was a Super Bowl, like, ball, and it was, like, watch the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl, and it, during the ads, it was, like, how we made the egg. I'm, like, what? <laughs> I'm, like, what? It's so dumb. What? Like, that documentary must be, like, setting up the egg and, and taking a picture of it, and boom, done. I mean, <laughs> I've never found interest in watching that shit. I mean, I, I think it's funny that a picture of the egg is is more like than Kylie Jenner, who's, like, you know, famous person number one after The Rock, but like, <laughs> it's interesting. It's still, yeah, it's got fifty-five million likes. I'll pull it up here. And it, it's <laughs> so dumb. Ridiculous. So man. dumb. <laughs> oh, that's fifty-five that million so likes. Oh Christ! And it, it obviously As went in decline. And then we had this thing. Forty-four million. I don't know if I can play that though. And then yeah, they they've ever, since they they've gone on. Hey, there you go. <laughs> uh, they've just kind of made like a comic out of it at this point. Yeah, I mean, I've never heard of this. Really, you should try it's, it, out, man. It's, it's so silly, man. It, it's ridiculous, really. I'm, I'm planning on doing this with toast or a duck right. egg. And this this offends me as somebody who spends his you know a significant amount of my time trying to get people to pay attention to me, and trying to get people to. <laughs> like the things that i do it just it offends me that millions and millions Dude, of people can well, like on a picture of an egg <laughs> on the same page it's, it's all meaningless if it's if it's that fleeting it's all yeah. meaningless well it depends i mean something like that's probably meaningless but like when, when you're when you go putting your heart and soul into a comedy piece and a story that's that's not exactly meaningless that's true hmm. and stories are a piece of immortality you know, yeah. if a story jumps into the lexicon of, of the human experience and if my story becomes the 
most known salvia story so that any time that anybody ever is about to do salvia and they're like oh did you hear about that guy that got stuck in tyler texas for eight years and some and they get told that story that's a little piece of immortality yeah and that's fucking a hard to find that, and that's that's yeah. that would be the that would be the biggest compliment that i could have when it comes to to that story if it just if it becomes just part of the human tapestry of, of stories that people tell each other I would, I would love to know. I wish there was a way to know how many times people have told each other that story. You were saying you know? to us beforehand, someone told, so someone mentioned the, the podcast you did with us to, to you at a show? Yeah, at, at shows and uh, had an old girlfriend reach out to me and tell me that she had seen me. You know, some of my kids' friends, you know, people, young, young kids uh, say, hey, we saw your dad, dad on a podcast called the Awfully Irish Podcast. I just like, would have had no idea that Shit. they watch your podcast. That's fucking but, cool. Man. I'm, I'm glad I'm glad to hear. We don't get that recognition. Yeah. I've never been recognized. <laughs> Thomas never been recognized. Uh, <laughs> I can live with that, though. We, we, we can, can live with that. We're good with that. I don't, I don't want people coming up to me for my autograph. I'll <laughs> pass on that one. I'll pass. Yeah. Watch the podcast. Poor, poor Thomas. He's, he's getting... Swarmed by people looking for autographs. Please, 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 everybody, one <laughs> at a time. <laughs> yeah. uh, Contact my manager, Steve Cantwell. He'll all questions <laughs> that lad. <laughs> um, actually, I, I had a question for like how, how comedy works over where you are. Yeah. So, do you have to have a manager, or are you doing this like solo? No, you don't have to have a manager. In fact, it would be it, it would be looked down on if you had a manager at my level. Of, of comedy but you're doing comedy like, every single day every single day but not at big shows so if you if i was touring or, and if and if i had a, a busy travel schedule and if i had a lot of moving pieces to get to get me to to a to a show and, and a lot of negotiations for money and things like that that's when i would need a, a manager but if i'm just hanging around houston doing open mics and and uh, and little shows at bars I don't, I don't need a manager for that. I, you know, I, I can't even feed myself with this. I get, there's no way that I could, I could uh, pay somebody else. Yeah. yeah. Someday though. Yeah. yeah. Cause when, we'll get there. when we talk to actors, they always say, you're not getting anywhere without a manager of some kind, but I've never asked that question to a comedian. Cause most yeah. that we've talked to, I don't think they have agents. No. Yeah. And you can, you can get surprising. You, you see surprisingly huge comedians that don't have management just because as, and it's getting a lot easier to make, to do it on your own. There are people out there that can just live the life of a, of a, almost of a trap wandering prophet as, as a stand up comedian and have almost no management and just kind of do door deals with, with rock clubs and are famous enough that they can just sort of float along on a, on a cloud of their own, of, of the, just the love that people have for them. So, Stand-up comedy is interesting. You know, it's not like a rock show. It's just one guy stands up there with a, with a microphone. And so you can get away with doing it yourself for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. What's your goals are overall? Like, are you looking to just keep, keep going with it forever? Or is it like a temporary yeah. thing for you? Yeah, no, I plan to spend the rest of my life doing stand-up comedy. You know, it's it. it it makes me happier than anything that I've ever done, you know, and if it, uh, and it, it takes so long to get good and I just really am looking forward to spending the balance of my life trying to get better. And, and it's, and it's, it's, uh, it's cruel, you know, you, you have to try new stuff and the new stuff doesn't always work. And so you have to be willing to go up there and bomb over and over again and work it out and get it right. Uh, and then once you get the, the story perfect, then it's only funny to somebody the first time that they hear it. And then you have to basically throw that in the scrap bin and go write another story and just try to polish, you know, five minutes a month worth of new stuff so that every year you'll have about an hour worth of, of fresh material in your repertoire. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's daunting, but it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. You know, the ability to, when you stand up there and you connect with an audience it's almost a form of telepathy because you can feel them and they can feel you and they just, uh, it's just the greatest feeling in the world. Mm. Better than love, better than sex. I'd love to give it a go then. Christ. 
yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously I have no experience with it, but it, it's amazing to see you when you're at a show. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to going out and seeing some comedian friends of ours when this whole COVID thing's over. Yeah, like we, we, we I, talk... I want to come over there. I, I definitely want to come over there and do and do some shows. You know. Yeah. Mm. So your Europeans eat up American comedians because they're never over here. Yeah. No, no. yeah. And you assume if they're in a country that's not theirs that they're big, so they're going to check you out or treat you like you're more than what you might be perceived as in states yeah and i think you can even i think you can even get a work visa as a comedian that's cool huh. so you could stay over there for a little while how hmm. how does that work do you have to do you have any, uh, i like, think can anybody claim to be a comedian or I think, yeah yeah i mean i don't work comedian to try it <laughs> I think I think somebody told me in uh, in Ireland and Britain it's a very uh, it's much more organized than it is here. They have there's like journeyman and apprentice level comedians and there's like uh, uh, it's kind of structured the way everybody gets paid for shows and after a certain number of years you can headline and I think it's just uh, a lot more organized over there to a certain extent. I think there there are there are trade organizations or possibly yeah. even unions. Hmm. We would hear it. It's just uh, there wouldn't be as many open mics, so like there's no real intermediate level. It's either you got it or you don't. Um, like the only open mics you're gonna find are at fucking colleges. And you want to be like sleezing your way about every college campus you can find to try and make some like super woke people laugh. Like, <laughs> yeah, I oh I said as a college student as well. Oh my god, I think the comedians there. I'm all, I won't actually say uh, <laughs> they're not at your level Steve <laughs> um, I have to stop myself there <laughs> yeah but um, anyway this has been a great catch up man this has been fun mm. you're, Thanks, you're fucking king we, we kind of touched I, on all bases life, death, everything in between I'd be happy to come on anytime tell you another story you know oh I'd love well, to have you back on man dude <laughs> it's, it's always a pleasure even just to you know shoot the shit because that's essentially what we did today uh we didn't really go yeah. in depth too much but it was, it was fun so steve if people want to check that. out where can they find you um i think my instagram is the steve cantwell or possibly my favorite steve what are the two and uh and then twitter is the other one that that one isn't so yeah. My favorite Steve and the Steve Cantwell on Instagram and Twitter. And that's essentially it. Other than that, you have to come to Texas and see a show. <laughs> I'm going to make sure to and do that you, 100%. Are you going, are you doing any shows anytime soon? Or you, should you do them every sure. fucking yeah. day? Yeah, fucking tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, power to you, man. And uh, best of Hey, come to the secret group on, on June the 11th. Uh, there's a. There's a, a, a show that I'm on there called Two Stories, where you I'm, you know tell two stories, and uh, the crowd is gonna guess which one is true and which one is a lie. <laughs> Man, they're not gonna um, get that. For fuck's sake, you're <laughs> yeah. you're gonna win that shit, bro. <laughs> My. <laughs> yeah, you're a good storyteller. Um, <laughs> Thank you, brother. So yeah, um, there you go. If you want to find him, you want to find him. And uh, if you got this far, fair play to you. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys. Stay with Happy yourself. Good luck. Top of the morning, lads and ladies. Support for the Awful Irish podcast is now brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's global waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels, and you're no longer lead the look of the Irish with the ladies. Manscaped just launched in Ireland. We've gone years without using the right tools for the job. You can now be one of the first men in Ireland to experience their life changing products. Your balls will thank you. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code IrishPod at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code IrishPod. <laughs>